Video games encourage us to pry, to explore, to uncover secrets, to crack games open like so many coconuts and feast on the nourishing milk within. Which is all well and good, so long as a game actually has a secret to uncover. But just very occasionally you'll get a situation where a game dangles a tantalising mystery in front of the player, the kind of thing that generates hours of speculating and a million forum posts, only for that mystery to turn out to be absolutely nothing except a terrific waste of our collective valuable time and energy. Which, to be fair to my mum, is what she always said video games were. Here then are the big mysterious secrets in games that turned out to be total zilch. Has anything good ever come out of going underwater in a video game? Because I can only think of getting eaten by sharks in GTA V and the Sonic drowning music. Ah! Here's another one for the list of terrible underwater things. The mysterious cave in Ocarina of Time hidden within Zora's domain. Just barely visible to young Link lurking beneath the surface, but totally inaccessible by diving. And when grown-up Link returns with his seabed exploring iron boots, the area is frozen over, keeping that little cave mouth at the bottom of the domain frustratingly out of reach. Why did Zelda fans care so much? What did they even think was down there? Ah, nothing really, just a little thing called the Triforce! See, like so many developers before and since, Nintendo made the terrible error of releasing a trailer for their game. And in this very early 1996 Space World trailer, Link can be seen yanking the Triforce itself out of a chest, leading many players to understandably assume the actual object of legend could be found somewhere in the game. The hunt for the Triforce in Ocarina of Time spanned years, a bazillion theories and doctored images. And as Zora's Domain contains a second underwater spot that is a secret warp location, the inaccessible cave was a prime candidate for where you might find the greatest treasure in Hyrule. Years later though, with Ocarina of Time's code having been finely sifted like rarefied grain, it's clear the Triforce is not attainable in the game. Even more of a letdown if you do manage to painstakingly glitch your way beneath the ice in Zora's domain and access the cave, it contains, wait for it, precisely nothing. <laughs> Thanks Nintendo! You know, in the time I spent hunting for the Triforce I could have trained as a doctor. So long as the only requirement for being a doctor is to spend years doing it. Software's action RPGs are famous for being packed full of extremely inscrutable secrets and shortcuts that players will drive themselves to distraction trying to uncover. And does From Software wield this power responsibly? It does not. Just ask Bloodborne players who, when they're not equipping crowns to activate hidden portals or holding a gesture in front of a brain for a full 60 seconds to unlock a hidden rune, can be found bagging their head against one particular wall. Or should we say one particular door? You wish it was a wall. That would actually have made it a lot simpler. The door in question is one found in the game's Cathedral Ward area, where in a room packed full of urns you'll find a chest with a gem in it, right next to a door. The on-screen text says the door is, quote, closed, which implies the possibility of open. Besides, most doors in Bloodborne require unlocking with a hidden key or convoluted NPC questline, so clearly it's time to exhaustively scour every square foot of Yharnam, show every object to every character, and generally do whatever it takes to open this mysterious door. Or don't do that, because the door does f all. With the benefit of years of experimentation and hackery, it's since been proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that the door was at one point going to be a shortcut back to the area just behind where you fight the cleric beast boss. The route was cut from the game, but for whatever reason, perhaps sheer unbridled dickery, FromSoft didn't see fit to swap the useless door with a blank bit of wall, or even remove the ability to interact with it. Probably all the developers were busy adding extra eyes to rom the vacuous spider. I think that's enough eyes, folks.
Nobody knew how to chase down a pointless video game mystery like a fan of rare platformers in the late 90s. Remember the Banjo-Kazooie Ice Key? Did you say Ice Key? Do you have information? Oh no, one of them's got in. After Banjo-Kazooie and its sequel Banjo-Tooie came Donkey Kong 64, a platformer based on Nintendo's lovable, huggable kidnap ape and his family, and with it a whole host of brand new hotly debated gaming mysteries. None is more infamous than the pillar. Hidden deep within the late game creepy castle stage is an area only accessible by Tiny Kong, which features a miniature castle. Take the teleporter behind it and you'll wind up in a room that features a balloon collectible and more memorably, an ominous pillar set beneath a spotlight. With a design that stands out from its surroundings, the language of video games is telling us this stone plinth in the center of a hidden room is clearly significant in some way. But players were stumped. What on earth did the pillar do? What was it for? Is it the way to a hidden area? Something to do with the cut, stop and swap feature from Banjo-Kazooie? Is it for worshipping? Should we be worshipping the pillar? Despite players' best efforts, the mysterious pillar stubbornly refused to do anything, and is in fact nothing more than an inert piece of masonry. It seems likely it would have served a purpose at one point in development, however. Consider this scan of the German edition of the game guide posted by Rare underscore Gamer, which seems to show a golden Donkey Kong trophy where the pillar is. Gotta respect the tenacity of Rare fans. From the weird pillar in Donkey Kong 64 to the ice key, they're truly- Where's the ice key? You've got it, haven't you? It's in you, isn't it? many things you hope to find jammed under a truck. And certainly not a cat. Oh, I've made myself sad now. But if anything, the fact so many players of the very first Pokemon games expected to find the legendary cat Pokemon Mew under one truck in particular is proof of how tantalizingly that vehicle itself was placed. See, this infamous truck on an isolated bit of land by the SS Anne cruise liner can't even be seen from the walkway onto the ship. But it is there. Later in the game, it disappears completely. Why? What's with the random truck place just out of view? The game must want us to find a way to get over there, right? You don't just have trucks for no reason. You're not Santa in the coke ads. Intrepid Pokemon players did, however, find a method to access Truck Island, one that basically requires breaking the sequence in which you normally receive important exploration abilities. Do this and you can surf a Pokemon all the way there and find that the hidden truck is truly, genuinely, to the dismay of millions of players, just a piece of unfortunately placed scenery, with no Mew squished under it. Which is terribly disappointing. Unless you're Mew. As if in recognition of their terrible crimes of getting our hopes up, the later remakes put a hidden item on Truck Island. A cookie, eh? And if I bring the cookie back to the truck, it tempts Mew to come out from underneath? No? Okay, fine. Food hygiene doesn't get any less important in the post-apocalypse. In fact, it's probably more important, seeing as you're only ever one bad tin of beans away from an early grave. There's seemingly no excuse then for the absolute state of Mama Dolce's food processing plant in Fallout 3. Except, of course, that this imposing factory was secretly a front for Chinese spies, so perhaps clean work surfaces weren't at the top of the agenda. How this place snuck under the FDA's radar isn't the only mystery surrounding Mama Dolce's. If you explore as far as the loading yard and use your incredible stealth build character to quietly dispatch the roaming enemies... <laughs> ah yes, very subtle. With the area clear, you can get a good look at this gate in the loading bay, which sadly for you is locked, meaning you'll need to find a key in order to access the secrets hidden within. So where's the key? Well, here's fun. There isn't one. 
That's right, so sorry if you or the many, many other Fallout 3 players like you spent hours combing through this labyrinthine factory trying to find the hidden key that would get you through the gate, but there literally just isn't one. Anywhere. Not in the game, not in the DLC, and the makers of the game didn't even have the good grace to simply patch the locked gate into a piece of inert scenery to prevent players being sent off on a wild goose chase. Seeing as the key is not extant and the gate itself is immune to nuclear attack, the only way to finally see what lies beyond is to use console commands to no-clip through the infamous gate, which reveals the area outside of the player's view isn't even programmed into the game, simply opening onto a wasteland expanse of nothingness. Oh good, just what Fallout 3 needed. More wasteland. Judging by this list, it's clear that kids in the 90s had a lot of energy to devote to video game urban myths. How did we find time for all of that and Beanie Babies? GoldenEye007 plays host to another of video gaming's most infamous letdowns, right in the first level, which is called Dam, probably because of the way it takes place on a dam, one that super spy James Bond memorably T-poses off of at the end. En route to the jumping point, however, you likely weren't the only player to be entranced by a secret part of the level, just barely visible through the N64's trademark Merc, a hidden island that clearly contained at least one building and what looks like a gun turret. What's over there? Could, for instance, a Pokeball containing Mew be under that gun emplacement? We have to consider the possibility. You really don't, though, because despite a great deal of rumour and speculation, any player who glitches their way over to this intriguing island will find that there's nothing there, just some empty scenery. On this occasion, however, players' instinctive feelings that the island was significant were bang on. In a book by Elise Knorr about the making of GoldenEye, folks who worked on the game revealed that there were plans for the island to be explorable, with a reward for those who did venture over to it. But implementing a boat ride across the water proved too much work, and it was easier to leave the island in than take it out. So we were right to think it was a thing. If that's any consolation, is it? Didn't think so. Grand Theft Auto may as well be called Urban Myth the Game, although it probably wouldn't have sold so well if it had been. This crime sim series is infamous for drumming up player speculation regarding paranormal happenings within its vast open worlds, from Bigfoots to hauntings, something probably not helped by developer Rockstar's insistence on peppering a few genuine spooky easter eggs into its games, and playing GTA V can honestly involve encounters with aliens and ghosts. Ooh, what then to make of this burned house in the town of Harmony in GTA V? It's not remotely clear how this ruined home came to be destroyed, the house never features in any of the game's story missions and seems to be a total mystery. So it's not surprising that many players have speculated this wrecked old house is in some way significant, whether with write-ups on the GTA Myths wiki, or videos claiming to have heard unexplained sounds or seen creepy occurrences while in the house's proximity. Imagine our feelings then, having hung around the creepy house for absolutely ages and experienced no paranormal happenings whatsoever. Strongly suggesting this burned house really is just a bit of randomly placed decoration, with no terrible secrets or environmental storytelling to uncover. Those feelings are mostly relief, to be honest, because A, we do not want to be haunted, and B, much more seriously, we don't want to be minus one entry in this list feature. So those were some of the secret hidden areas that uh, turned out to be absolutely nothing in video games. Uh, can you think of any others? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, we love finding out all fun new things from you folks. And uh, hey, why don't, why don't you go down to like the secret area below this video and uh, if, you find, if you look really, really closely, there's a little thumbs up sign and you can click that and then 
go to our Patreon. Yeah, that not much else happens, so you can go to our Patreon. There's a Mew under it. And th No, there's not a Mew under no, it. No, there is. But there is access to our Discord where you can come and say hi. And yeah, that's where Mew is. Yeah, that's where Mew is. Get a Mew 100%. there. 100%. <laughs>